13 is a first-person shooter developed by Ubisoft Paris, released for PlayStation 2, GameCube and Microsoft Windows. We're ready to launch operations. It's an extremely underrated game with lots of visual flair that offers a linear but enjoyable experience for its 7 or 8 hour campaign. Based off a Belgian comic of the same name, you assume the role of an amnesiac named Jason Fly, voiced by the great David Duchovny, who finds himself framed for the assassination of the president. As the game opens, Jason washes up on a beach and is soon under attack by murderous thugs. Who's that? After eluding his attackers, the player then begins to retrace his steps eventually remembering his past as a special forces soldier, as well as discovering a sinister plot led by a group of conspirators. In less than 24 hours, the new government will be in place. Dukovny puts in a decent enough performance as Jason Fly, though at times he does sound a little bit bored with the material. Oh, I'm really gonna miss that old bastard. Adam West, who plays his commanding officer General Carrington, as well as the female rapper Eve, filling in as Fly's suggested love interest, fill out the supporting cast. Get a running start. I really don't want to say too much about the story, as the plot elements, and particularly the way it's delivered, are one of the most enjoyable aspects of the game. Twists are abundant and frequent, and the narrative moves at just the right pace, so you don't get swamped with too many details at once. I'm starting to doubt this man's identity. There's lots of flashbacks and revelations that are all delivered in-game, giving the player a little bit of interactivity, so you don't feel like you're just watching a film. It's mostly very well written and handled, as is the gameplay itself, and very early on in, you'll realise that 13 is one of a kind. It runs on a very heavily modified Unreal 2 engine, and they've managed to really push the engine to its limits. From gorgeous particle effects like explosions and snow, to intricate modelling of props in the interior areas, the game shows great attention to detail. The term comic book come to life is probably the best way to describe how this game looks and feels. Most of the graphics are cell shaded, giving things a thick black outline meant to replicate the ink work seen in comics. Various explosions and other sound effects are represented visually through the use of onomatopoeic words that appear on the screen. When a large explosion occurs near the player, for instance, the screen even shakes, revealing an outline very similar to the edge of a comic book panel. And this carries across to other actions as well. My favourite of these is how a headshot is emphasised by three panels that quickly flash upon the screen showing your victim's gory demise from multiple angles. <laughs> Panels might also be used to highlight important events happening in real time within the game, or to make the player aware of clues or other important items in the nearby vicinity. All of these elements combine to make 13 really impressive to behold, and it's something that to this day has never really been replicated. It's definitely in a league of its own in terms of its style. And speaking of style, it would be a crime not to mention the soundtrack. Featuring a mix of orchestral instruments and jazz funk, the music dynamically adapts to the actions of the player, and is definitely one of the stronger points of the game. It's just so hard not to get amped up during some of the more climactic moments, and it really intensifies some of the more intense sequences, especially the boss fights. Ubisoft have done a good job of making sure there's a lot of variety from mission to mission, and the pacing of levels always differs. Some missions might require you to take on a full-on stealth approach, remaining hidden from sight the entire time, whilst other missions are focused on flat-out action, pitting you against dozens of assault rifle-wielding bad guys. There's a large selection of weapons and gadgets to use, and they all serve their purpose depending on the mission itself. Machine guns and assault rifles work well in the more combat-orientated areas, whilst crossbows and throwing daggers are ideal for those times when a more subtle approach is required. Throughout certain levels, you'll also find hidden documents that can make your weapons and skills more effective. Things like upgrading your lockpicking skill or being able to dual wield weapons. And these are good at giving the game a little bit of replayability. Now, whilst there's not that much worth complaining about in 13, the issue is that the problems with this game, whilst few, really do affect the game in quite a profound way. Firstly, the game doesn't rely on quick saves, it uses a checkpoint system, something that is a bit of a standard for games these days, and that's all well and good, but the checkpoints are often extremely rare, sometimes absent from levels completely. You really start to see the flaw in this when you're doing some of the stealth-only missions, where detection means a complete restart. These missions often focus on trial and error, and it's quite common to play 10 or 15 minutes worth, 
only to inadvertently screw up, fail the entire level and have to do it all over again. There's areas where you'd expect there to be a checkpoint, like after a long cutscene or after a boss fight for instance, where they don't give you anything at all and it just feels like something's missing. I'm not sure if this was a deliberate decision by the designers to make the game more difficult, but it really does suck. It's not too bad in the earlier levels, but some of the later levels can be really tricky, especially the aforementioned stealth only missions, where you have to do things in a very specific order or else you end up getting detected and failing. These areas commonly spawn in guards from behind you that come in without any warning, and the only way to avoid this is to know about it before it happens, which obviously you're not going to know about if it's a first playthrough. I find this is just a cheap way to make the game more difficult. And this kind of ties in with my second complaint regarding the stealth itself. It's great in the way that it's good old fashioned peeking around corners and hiding bodies in closets, but it can be extremely mundane and tedious. All you do is wait around a corner for a guard to turn his back. You rush up behind him and knock him out with a chair, beer bottle or whatever the hell else you get your hands on. Then make the slow trudge to a closet or a storage room to hide his unconscious body. Repeat this 9 or 10 times a level until the path is clear. It's great that they've tried to differentiate the game from just being an all-out shooter, but most of the time during these sections, you just want to get back to shooting bad guys. Finally, there's a few small niggling annoyances, like having to manually switch back to your weapon after using gadgets, and the cheapness of enemies with explosive weapons. But these are really just subjective more than anything else, and at the end of the day, the core game is solid enough and provides lots of entertainment. 13 was originally going to be the first in a series of games which ultimately got cancelled due to poor sales. As a result, the game ends on a nail-biting cliffhanger which will never be resolved, but that doesn't mean it's not worth playing. 13 doesn't really do anything new in terms of gameplay and shooting, but in terms of its style, it's safe to say it's never been done before, and it's almost worth checking out just for that reason alone.